Let me just say, this was a fantastic episode of Mashal, but man, rip bozo. If there's one line you should never cross, technically there's two, but honestly, the first rule is probably the biggest and most important to remember, is you never mess with the cream puffs. As long as you don't do that, you have at least a pretty good shot of being on Mash's good side. Though the second rule is don't mess with his friends or family, but it honestly does feel like cream puffs may come first, or at the very least, it's enough to immediately trigger a murderous reaction. As this poor bastard, I mean, he seemed like a scumbag, he literally was taking cheap shots saying they're horsing around, and Mash was ready to square up and murder a fool, and I was like, man, what, what caused him? Is it just because he disrespected him? No, it's because he had a cream puff tucked in his jacket, and he thought you destroyed it. Once he realized that it was fine, after Lance kind of pulls him away, he no longer had the murderous intent, and it may take him a little while to realize what's happened. He does have a lot of cobwebs up there. He doesn't really clue into things right away. I mean, his cream puff went flying, it then went all over the place, there's a little bit on the side of his face, and it took him like 10 seconds to realize that the cream puff has been tainted. So, honestly, next episode, rip Bozo, because that's the one line you definitely don't want to cross. He didn't really seem to have too much of a connection with Dot, as seen by literally the pimp slap, so at the end of the day, it wasn't seeming like he was going to jump in the fight for any particular reason. So what reason can you give him? Well, you disrespect his food source, and yeah, that's pretty fantastic. Now, I do have a full live reaction to this wonderful episode available on my Patreon if you do want to see my full on gut thoughts. I think the thing that's really interesting about Mashal is I knew the episode was close to over, but for me personally... Around the time they got into the forest, to me, that felt like two minutes of content. I was like, man, okay, they're squaring up. We'll probably end this episode with MASH throwing a few hands. But no, the episode and the credits start playing. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's already been 20 minutes. Like, this show just fly by, like, just like that. Like, you just, you start an episode, you're seeing so many ridiculous jokes. And by the end, you just can't wait to see the next ridiculous premise that they come up with. The episode could be summed down to, as MASH doesn't do his homework, he has to learn how to make potions, and then he squares up against this dude who's trying to steal their medals, and obviously this entire house seems like a group of scumbags. I mean, they got some weird cult vibe going on down below, and I mean, the fact that this is now the second time MASH has pushed away love interests, even if this love interest is rather fake and tainted. At the end of the day, this girl's using all the magic she can to make all the men fall to their knees, and MASH is just a stone wall. If only she knew his kryptonite, if only she knew, give him a cream puff and he would have been yours. But it seems like Mash, for as being as simple-minded as he might appear to be, is going to be the hardest character for the school to break. There was some glorious jokes, and honestly, the Hulk, the VAs, man. The VAs for what are basically Mandrakes, I forget what they call them, like Managora or something like that. I mean, basically, Lance is trying to teach these fools how to calm them down and how to make their potion. And the VAs for these creatures, I just need to see a behind-the-scenes footage of whoever was voicing them because it sounded just like a grown man doing almost a baby cry scream, and it was glorious. And to be honest, I thought what was going to happen was MASH was going to slap the fool. The thing that caught me by surprise is that seemingly every time MASH tried to do the spell, it got more pissy and bigger. So by the time he eventually does slap it, I mean, the thing's ready to be Godzilla and destroy the entire village, and it's pretty funny. Especially given the fact that Lance, not a good teacher at all, but damn if the student he's teaching is far worse. Lance just cuts it up, he's like, hey, potion's done. I love the fact that there's never going to be a logical reason for this, but somehow you can follow him step by step, and Mash will somehow make a cream puff. Lance literally says, what in the hell? I literally watched you, there's no way you did that. But then again, he was able to throw a broom so fast and sprint to it to make it look like he flew. So maybe he's just that majestic that you, you can follow, but you get dazed in the rhythm and you don't realize what he's making. And somehow the green-filled cream puff turned out to be delicious, supposedly. The, it's ridiculous. It's simple humor, but the simplicity of it just allows for it to be refined to such a degree that it becomes such a beautiful joke and execution overall. And we get introduced to Dot. And Dot was a pretty intimidating force to begin with. I mean, I'm just going to headcanon this myself. I know the hallways probably all look the same, just given that it's the same building. But I'd like to believe for my own headcanon, because it'd be funny, considering the fact just a couple episodes ago, MASH ripped into the floor and was burying a faculty member alive. 
So I would love to imagine that Dot did the same thing at the same hallway and just imagining that there's some poor janitor who comes by to do the cleaning being like, bruh, why are these students digging up holes in my goddamn concrete floor? Because that's just way funnier to me if there's like that ongoing gag. Even if they never touch upon it myself, that's how I'm going to view it. So they introduce him as a pretty intimidating force. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be a rival for MASH for sure. And then immediately he just is like, bruh, no. The whole reason why, you know, you're grooming with the form of this balance of one-to-one. -one. Any girl showing interest to anyone other than me, we got to purge you. And... Honestly, he had the slap coming, but it was pretty great to see because, honestly, at first, I thought he was just dense as a doorknob. Didn't even cross my mind that the girl was trying to manipulate at first. Obviously, I caught it before the punchline came. But initially, I was like, oh, this is going to be one of those characters who, like, he'll actually have these potential love interests, but he's going to be too nervous to act on it. And then when it turns out to be that he was being manipulated, I was like, okay, yeah, this definitely isn't the woman for you. I was just waiting for MASH to be like, no, I have no interests or something like that, but... He's too, uh, he's too blunt and almost emotionless to go too meme-worthy, but it's pretty funny seeing how he absolutely broke her after basically saying no, no man has ever kind of resisted her touch. I do love the fact that there's clearly going to be probably some ongoing gags, and I think the whole Siscon Lollicon joke is going to be fantastic. So Mash, as soon as he sees Lance at the beginning of this episode, says Lollicon, and he immediately is like, no, Siscon. I love the idea that that's going to be a legit ongoing joke, and the fact that he rips the amulet off his neck and shows it to them in order to get Lance to help them with their homework after he gets basically Exodia obliterated into the wall. I mean, it's so simplistic, but all these little moments and jokes add into such a fun cast of characters in this Hogwarts parody of a school with the One Punch Man attending it, and it's honestly fantastic. I think between Lance, Dot, Mash... Those three alone would be enough to hold a show together, but they've actually introduced a pretty hefty supporting cast, and honestly, the meme faces, whether it's ongoing side characters or ones we just met, I mean, it all feels right given the BS that MASH is putting them through, and there's a line at, I think it's around the time they're making the potions, and it just comes down to like, bro, you know you're at a magic school, right? Like, why are you so shocked by the fact that we need to do this stuff? It's just... I love it. Like, this show is absolutely hilarious. It has enough meat and substance to keep a narrative and character arc going. And honestly, this show, to me, is just like the perfect comedy. I think the past two episodes were absolutely the peak comedy that I've seen from this show. And seeing MASH slap fools, whether it's talking plants or boys who just don't know their personal space. I'm loving it, and these episodes feel so short. Thoughts, feelings yourself, though, down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Ring that bell, of course, so you can get notified when I upload on the channel. And like I mentioned, full live reaction is available on my Patreon. While you're there, you can also get a video shout out like a few are about to get here. So today, we have Corti, Ziki Lu, and Ray Quig. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.